invitation and agreeing to do this uh, this interview. Y'all are some of my favorite people in the world. And I uh, just want to kind of clear the air up on some issues and things that maybe some of our church folk don't understand. They may see a clip of YouTube or something and say, oh, you know, because we know that you all are misrepresented a lot. And I just want to clear the air and give you an opportunity to speak your mind. And so I appreciate you agreeing to do this. I got my questions wrote down here so I won't forget anything. First question, Brother Armstrong, I'd like for you to tell us what you were doing before you went into the ministry. And I'd like to know how long you've been an open air campus preacher and what influenced you to pursue this type of ministry. Well, I'm from Miami. I wasn't born there, but I was raised there. I lived there most of my life, and I was a school teacher. And, you know, God, as I be, continued to pray and seek God, read the Bible, I'd read about, you know, men of God. I really desire for God to bring revival, and God began dealing with me with, about open air preaching. And I was in a service and a minister came up and you know, gave me a word of knowledge or called me out and told me I'd be I was God had called me anointed me and I'm going in the streets. And at the time that really scared me. It wasn't my idea of ministry. It wasn't what I had in mind. You know, I I think there was a lot of pride there. I think you know, it was. I didn't really look at that as a you know, glamorous type of ministry. Right. But you know, from that point on, uh, God just really began to deal with me and change my heart. And so I started going out and preaching on my own in the streets of Miami in July of 2003. Mm. And I had. As, as soon as I started preaching on the street, I'd do a lot of research, try to learn everything I could about open air preaching. Right. And I got a hold of Jed Smock's book called Who Will Rise Up. Mm. And when I read Jed Smock's book, Who Will Rise Up, I'd already been preaching open air for a year and a half, and I was preaching on the street every week. But when I read that book, uh, it, at the same time I was reading that book, I was reading The Heavenly Man. By, by Brother That's Young okay. down, uh, in, in uh, China, the underground church. And, you know, we were talking about what a good book that was, but I was already wow. reading this other book by Jed Smock, and it was so much more pertinent to what I was doing. I could relate to it so much more. You know, I kept telling my wife, I said, I, I like this book even better. Hmm. And after I finished reading that book every night uh, for weeks and even months, I'd, I'd dream all night long that I was preaching on the campus. Wow. And so we had already talked about it at the time when I was a school teacher selling the house and buying a trailer All right. and going preaching full time. We didn't know anybody that did that as far as open air. But uh, and so that was just, you know, more of a confirmation. Amen. And my second question is is I mean, obviously, you're in the full-time ministry now. How exactly do you support yourself and your wife? I mean, how? what is your income now? Well, you know, we went out by faith. Uh, we just went out to obey God. I didn't, I didn't really have any contacts or anything like that when we first went out. Uh, I, had, I had started writing reports. Uh, Almost from the beginning, about the, you know about the open air preaching that we do, and you know give them out to people so that they pray for us, and they'd be aware of what we're doing, and you know occasionally I would do like a missionary trip and ask for support. And right. So you know like I you know we built some confidence there with with some people, and you know so some of those uh, people uh, you know gave us some support, and. We got a little bit of support from the, the church that we were in down there that we uh, we were in Miami. And then, you know, as we've been on went out, you know, God's just really been faithful to open up doors and, and hook us up with people. Right. And, you know. Right. Uh, so Well the reason I was asking is because I know that I mean, I was an evangelist full time in church, you know, for like two and a half years and it's a lot easier. They take up an offer in every service, and they really take care of you. And 
I'm pretty sure you're not their favorite preacher out there on the campus, and they're probably not passing the hat and taking up a lot of offerings. So, you know, I can see where it would be a little bit more difficult for a campus preacher, someone who's not in the church every night, and you know, and even at that, a lot of the church, the churches, you know, they're dead and they don't care anything about open air evangelism, right. and it, um, really they're against you guys, not you, you know, but collectively as a whole, because they're hiding behind their four walls and their pulpit and. They're not even going to support you, and they're supposed to be the household of faith, and so I can see where that would be very difficult. We occasionally now we have had <coughs> occasionally we have had students uh, give us money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I can remember years ago when I was this was this was when I first uh, when I first started preaching down in Miami. One time I was preaching out there, and I saw this guy walk by, and he. Turned around, and came back, stuck something under my foot, and then uh, he walked away again. Came back, and came back, stuck another something under my foot. I saw it was a green thing, so I just picked it up, kept on preaching. So when I, at the end of the night, I op I pulled it out of my pocket, and it was two one hundred dollar bills. Wow! And so I I believe at that time, you know, God was just kind of, you know, giving me a little confirmation. Yeah, maybe? confirmation you know, to, to to trust Him. You know, because yeah. He was dealing with us to do this, and <clears throat> I didn't know anybody that did it, but I believe God was dealing with us to do this, and I was, you know, just trying to ask God to strengthen me and, you know, build my faith and right. you know, con confirm that this is what He wants us to do. Amen. Well, I can assure you, you're our favorite open air preachers, and our churches want to continue to support you. Now, money aside, when you're preaching out on the campus, the, the streets, what is your normal response? I mean, are they uh, they love you and hugging you and saying you're the greatest preacher we've ever heard, or is it confrontational, or is it a vice versa? There's some that are positive response, some negative. Of course, my opinion, it's all positive. You know, if the gospel is being preached, but uh, from your own personal experience, what do you see as a response to your all's preaching? Well. There's always the few that appreciate us, but the, as a rule, the majority is always against us, and I believe that that's the way it should be. That's that's the biblical way. You know, why, why do you say that?